I have to be done guys, I have to be done opening Japanese modern sealed product on the channel. Snow Hazard and Clay Burst just came out and Clay Burst, the box itself is selling for nearly $200 right now and that is because there is a Lono alternate art full art trainer card in it that now has two copies sold on eBay for over $1,700 raw. What is going on? I have my own ideas of what I think is going on. Now put on your slightly too tight tinfoil hats because I'm not 100% sure that this is exactly what's happening. These are only my opinions of how we got to where we are, but we are in a spot right now that feels a lot like Shining Fates ETB selling for $120. There's just not enough supply to meet the demand for these new Japanese sets. There's a reason for that, so let's get started. So I think there's quite a few different reasons why people kind of shifted to Japanese, and that is because when in 2020, like I said, when Shining Fates and those sets came out and there wasn't enough supply to meet demand and those boxes were going three, four times above retail price out the gate, that is when I think people started to shift their gaze outside of Pokemon and to different places within Pokemon, like Japanese cards, Chinese cards, Korean cards, different languages. A lot of people were picking up Korean boxes because you could pick up EV Heroes Korean boxes for like 30 bucks and open those alternate arts and it was tons of fun. Some people shifted their eyes to Japanese cards like I did. I was opening Matchless Fighter instead of Battle Styles because Battle Styles was too expensive in my opinion. So I picked up Matchless Fighter for, you know, half the price. But at a time in which English Pokemon felt way too expensive for a lot of people, a lot of people shifted their eyes, whether it was within Pokemon or to different TC TCGs like Dragon Ball Super or Digimon or MetaZoo, those different TCGs that popped up during that time that people wanted to dabble in as well as they got priced out of Pokemon. Now, as we've seen kind of English come back to some sense of normalcy, we have seen the Japanese market now skyrocket to absolute crazy levels, not only just in the full art trainer market, but also in the sealed market. One of the few reasons I think that this shift, this demand for Japanese product has happened is because of larger content creators like PokeRev and Leonhart and other guys on YouTube shifting their eyes from solely opening English like they have been for so long and now opening Japanese sets because I think they realize that they can show off the new artworks, the new cards. They can give a sneak peek to their viewers months in advance if they open the Japanese sets. And I don't know if you guys know this, but PokeRev himself is a massive YouTuber, not just in the Pokemon space. like. On YouTube, he can put products in front of the eyes and influence the market in ways that no other YouTuber can on this platform, in my opinion. And we saw that with the Aerodactyl alternate art from, what is it, Lost Origin? When he failed to pull that and however many packs it was, we saw how that affected the market. He directly affected the market himself. So when he started to popularize and start to open a lot of Japanese product on his channel, I think a lot of people who didn't really care for Japanese started to realize that they could also open Japanese. It was a little less expensive than English and they could get a sneak peek first look at the cards before the cards actually came out. Now, a second reason is the condition is just that much better. The condition on Japanese Pokemon cards is absolutely insane and grading has become a lot more popular over the last couple years as well. People grading and flipping and selling and, and what do people want when they grade? They want to get PSA 10 and the quality control we've seen it English has been increasingly bad. Japanese cards are almost guaranteed if they are centered, they are almost guaranteed a PSA 10. That's why we see a lot of these Japanese ultra rares in the PSA pop report have like 85 to 90% gem rates because they literally come out of the pack immaculate. So the condition and quality control is that much better than English. And on top of that, a lot of times the cards just look better in Japanese. They either have better saturation and coloring, they have a better texture on the ultra rares. There's something about the Japanese that typically look better than the English. Now, obviously they are in Japanese and they're not in English, but I feel like that sentiment of not being able to read the card is not a valid one at this point because most of the people in this hobby are collectors and not players and they want to get the best looking card with the best looking artwork. They want that combination together and a lot of times that's in Japanese. So my next point is where you have to really start to tighten the tinfoil. Japanese card stores in Japan seem to run the singles market or they at least are able to set the floor on what a single 
is going to sell for out of the gate because they have buy lists. So they will release their buy lists and how much they are willing to buy each card for, which ultimately, if you have a buyer for a certain price and that happens to be a store, that is kind of the floor. They are setting the floor for a particular card, which is artificially going to set that card's price. Now, I'm sure that you set these prices based on demand, based on how many people are coming and asking about it, based on all this stuff, but ultimately, they are choosing to set these prices at a particular point. And when a single, like the Lono alternate art from Clayburst, is set at like a $2,000 buy price, that is going to affect the pre-order prices for boxes coming out of the gate. So if you have a store before release saying, we will buy this Lono alternate art single for $2,000. If you pull it on release, then of course, clay burst boxes are going to skyrocket in price because people are going to gamble and people are going to try to pull a $2,000 card out of a $200 box. So you can see how Japanese card stores releasing their buy lists and setting these kind of floors for some of these cards would increase ultimately the sealed product and what those boxes are going to go for. Now, you might be thinking, well, a $200 box for a $2,000 card, $200 box is only, you know, 60 above or 40 above the MSRP of an English box. Well, that is true, but Japanese boxes, especially just these regular sets, not the specialty sets, they only typically have like one big secret rare. And then some of these boxes now that have these art rares, you might get a few art rares and then one big secret rare. So you're not guaranteed, like in some of the English boxes, to get multiple SARs. You're only really guaranteed one. That is why Japanese boxes typically, their MSRP is only 40 US dollars because you're only getting one secret rare and typically they include a lot of lesser rarities into the secret rare slots and you'd only get one. It's a little bit different with these most recent sets, but in the past, that's how it's gone. So even stuff like a, a full art Jolteon would be your one secret rare hit out of a box. And that's why those boxes are typically way less expensive than an English box where you can get a full art, a bunch of V maxes, a bunch of Vs, a, you know, a secret rare, a gold card, like all this different stuff in it. In Japanese, typically you only get one secret rare and that is why it's only, you know, 40, $50 USD. Obviously clay burst because of this $2,000 set floor price on that single, it's a $200 box, which is four times to five times MSRP, which is kind of crazy. So people are buying this box for $200 trying to pull a $2,000 card. Now the ones that have sold on eBay have been around $1,700 and $1,800, but that's still insane. That's still extremely expensive. Now another problem that's affecting this market is that demand for Japanese cards in the United States has increased significantly over time as well. So a lot more people here want to open Japanese stuff like we talked about earlier with PokeRev getting into it and all that stuff. A lot of people want to buy the Japanese stuff and open it up here too, which is great, but you're talking an entire country or multiple countries popularizing a different language that has basically never really left one country and now demanding that they get the product too. So you have a much smaller country than even just the United States, but now there's China, now there's Singapore, now there's these other countries that wanna buy into Japanese product as well. And you have all this demand from all these other countries coming in and taking it from Japan. So now you're seeing a lot of pictures pop up on Reddit and Facebook Marketplace and all these different things of just basements full of Japanese sealed product because people are getting into the sealed product investment game too. So the demand increased just a astronomical amount, a massive amount. And Japan just hasn't been able to keep up with supply. Well, honestly, as a business person, I can't necessarily blame the Japanese card stores for selling a bulk amount of their product overseas. Hypothetically, if you get 200 boxes and you sell 20 in your store in Japan and you sell 180 for five times the price to America, you're gonna be making a lot more money doing it that way. Now, it really sucks for locals because everything's gonna be sold out all the time because you're constantly sending the majority of your supply out of the country, but ultimately you're making way more money doing that. Now, not only has this affected the secondary market, but it's also affected stores in Japan to the point where a buddy in Discord that was recently visited Japan, three different major cities, Tokyo, Kyoto, and Osaka, went to multiple different 
card source, which actually refused to sell to him because he either didn't speak well enough uh, Japanese or he was a foreigner. And they just wouldn't, they would just flat out not even sell to him. Now, when I was there in November, at the Pokemon centers, I could buy boxes, but they would cut the plastic off there at the register, which I thought was fine because I wanted, the op I wanted to open the box anyway. There was also another box I was able to buy at a card store in Shibuya, and they limited me to just one box, which was totally fine as well. But not being able to buy at all, like being refused at the door for any sealed product, that's pretty rough. Hopefully, they can get this figured out before August, before Worlds. So that when, you know, all these foreigners go to celebrate worlds with the Japanese population, we can all co-mingle and get along. And there isn't, there isn't uh, people being refused at the door for being a foreigner, uh, not being able to buy any sealed product to crack at worlds. So that would really suck for people. I don't think it would be a very good look for Japan, even though I understand where they're coming from with this, where they have all of this new demand from people outside of their country. But they're just they just need to up the supply, really. I mean, that's 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 all they have to do is they have to up the supply and people have to realize that these singles that are, you know, have these artificial floors set by by card stores need to they, they need to not buy at those prices. You can't force the people who have a ton of money who are going to buy these cards right out the gate to not buy it just doesn't happen. So it's going to be tough. It's weird, but for right now, I'm not paying five times retail price to open Japanese Modern. So for here on the channel, we won't be opening Japanese Modern unless I can get the boxes at a decent pre-order price going forward.